Hi everyone, Laura from Nanny Parent Connection here. Welcome back to my From Babysitter to Nanny video series. So far in this series, I've covered how to become a babysitter and the things parents are looking for in a babysitter. Today in episode three, I'm going to discuss nine steps to transition to becoming a nanny. Step number one, ask for letters of recommendation from families you've worked with. This will be more important as you're trying to negotiate to land your first nanny position than it will be for your second or third nanny positions, but letters of recommendation are always useful. As you're transitioning away from babysitter or maybe even mother's helper experience, this will help to give you credibility as maybe your experience on your resume is a little on the lighter side. Number two, have a resume to highlight your previous childcare experience and strength. If you haven't already seen it, please check out my how to write a great nanny resume video. I'll drop the links in the description below. Number three, summarize your babysitting experience on your resume. Make sure to include the number of children and the ages of children, as well as the job duties you are responsible for. If you babysat for multiple families, summarize all of this experience together. You could say, I babysat for children ages six months on up to age 13. I cared for up to three children at a time and the job duties I was responsible for, and then go ahead and list those out. Number four, any babysitting or mother's helper experience that was recurring on a regular basis should have its own separate entry. An example of what this would look like on your resume might say Smith family, after school babysitter, September 2020 until present, ages of children at start, five and seven years old, provided regular after-school care for two children, which included walking to their school for pickups and walking back to the home, provided snacks and helped with school activities, planned activities for the children around the home, including indoor and outdoor play, provided half-day care Monday through Friday during the summer months. So those are some examples of the verbiage you could use when you had a more regular recurring babysitting position. Number five, play up your strengths on your resume. This could include any volunteer experience, any school clubs or activities you participated in, any musical talents you might have, or any skills such as leadership, organization, attention to detail, or particular areas of study or interest you may have. Number six, a good transitional job between babysitting and nannying might be becoming a mother's helper. Being a mother's helper means that you help to provide care for a family while the mother is around. Perhaps they needed an extra set of hands, or maybe they needed to run an errand for a short period, or perhaps be away working in another room while you're providing care. As a mother's helper, you might take on more responsibility than you would as a babysitter. You might be fully in charge of the children, or you might do extra duties around the house, such as maybe help with laundry, some organization, that sort of thing. Number seven, advertise that you're looking for a mother's helper or nanny position online. You might turn to a local childcare website in your community, such as Nanny Parent Connection, if you're in the Seattle area. This could also look like some of the childcare communities on social media, such as Facebook or maybe even next door. You can also let families who you've previously babysat for know that you're looking to take on additional responsibilities by becoming a mother's helper. One of these previous families you've worked with may be looking for some additional help, or they might have a friend or neighbor who they know is looking for this kind of care as well. If these families don't need that kind of help and they don't know anyone else who does, please ask them to keep you in mind in case something comes up down the road. Also, don't forget to add this mother's helper experience to your resume because it absolutely counts. Number eight, you can also use this previous babysitting or mother's helper experience to apply for daycare or preschool assistant roles. These types of positions are very common to see on a nanny's resume. And it's really great because it reflects on the nanny's ability to multitask and care for multiple children at once. This type of experience is particularly helpful for a nanny share or for providing care to a family with multiple children. Care providers can gain some really valuable experience and knowledge in these types of childcare settings. It also can demonstrate reliability, follow through, and one's ability to work together as part of a team. Daycare or preschool assistant positions may require that you take some additional child development training or go through a background check process, such as through a state agency like the Department of Early Learning. Number nine, consider taking some additional nanny or child care training courses on your own. This is a great way to show any prospective employer that you are serious and committed about transitioning to nanny care. Good resources for these classes include the International Nanny Association, the U.S. Nanny Association, 
or you can simply do a Google search for nanny classes. Aside from nanny specific courses, you could also consider taking some of the following courses in water safety, child development, positive discipline, special needs care, child nutrition, or cooking. All right, everyone, that's it for video three in my Babysitter to Nanny video series. Today, we talked about the nine steps to transition to becoming a nanny. I hope this information was helpful. If you like this video, please make sure you click on the like button, subscribe, or ring the bell so that you can be notified when more of these videos come out. Please join me back for episode four in this series when I cover how to become a nanny. Thanks, everyone. I will see you next time. Bye.